As we continue to process the news of John Madden's passing and our very own Steve Mariucci, very close with John Madden here, as you see in this photo, beautiful memories uh, to look back on um, as we look back at his not only legendary career, but an extraordinary life. Uh, so we have Coach Mooch and Steve uh, Rich Eisen with us uh, as well here. And Mooch, we saw that picture. Uh, we know this is incredibly tough. We wanted to give you a moment here to be able to talk about what John Madden meant to you. First of all, I just, I'm shocked. Um, I think we all are. I, I, you know, he's 85 years old and we knew he had some health issues in the last few years, but um, I had a lunch date set up for next week with him. We, you know, we talk all the time. Um, and, he, you know, what you see with John is what you get. You know, he's, he's a big personality. We know that. And we, we saw that when he was on the sidelines as a Hall of Fame coach. We saw that when he was in the booth winning 31 Emmys or whatever the heck he won every year. Um, and he was that way in his real life. He was a big, fun personality, smart guy, um, so dedicated to not only his family, and my condolences certainly go out to Virginia and, and Mike and Joe and Jesse and just everybody and um, – he, he was, uh, he became a friend of mine when I was coaching. I, I didn't know him really until I was coaching and he was doing games. And gosh, I remember him when I was coaching in San Francisco, we played in Green Bay. He had his Madden Cruiser bus and our production meeting was on the bus. And my mom brought pasties and ketchup. And that's how we did our production meeting. And that's how we got to know each other by eating pasties. And then of course, you know, we did a bocce ball tournament together, the Madden Mariucci. For 22 years, we raised $8 million uh, together and, and supported juvenile diabetes and, and type 1 diabetes and Special Olympics and, of course, my Beacon House and just all kinds of things, the, the, uh, the local police department. And he's such a, he was such a good man, a generous man, and, and uh, you know, uh, so involved and dedicated to the NFL. He was always on committees. Uh, competition committees say I was on the player safety advisory committee because he asked me to be, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago or whatever. And he was so dedicated to the sport of football and to his family and to, uh, you know, everything he, that was near and dear to him. Um, yeah, we're going to miss him. Thank you for that, Mooch. I know you're still processing this news. We so appreciate you just sharing a, a little glimmer of that friendship that you've built. And of course, Rich Eisen is here with us as well. And Rich, you've seen so many of, of these legendary moments with John Madden and of course, I'm sure his impact on you and your broadcast career as well. Well, I, I appreciate you, you know, bringing me in. Mooch, I love you, man. You know, I'm, I know he meant so much to you. I really know what he meant to you and your family and it's, um, I, I'd give you a hug if I could through this Zoom right now. And, you know, I love you very, very much. And, um, you know, um, just in terms of, you know, I obviously didn't know him personally like Steve, um, but uh, I felt like I knew him. And that that is a testament to his uh, remarkable ability to connect to people with people. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm somebody who grew up watching and listening to him with Summerall uh, call games, and then obviously with uh, John Madden calling games with uh, Al Michaels, and you know, you're looking on the screen with Vince Scully, all the people who he called with. But he had an, an incredible ability to connect um, at a level that made you feel smarter, but also like somebody sharing a beer with somebody and um, just the way that he could point things out in plain English, even through words like boom. I remember the telestrator and being so enamored by somebody drawing on the screen while breaking down a play in a way that made it easy to understand and want to actually shake his hand and, you know, go out and hang uh, just an every man. And the, the, memory I have that I'll always keep 
was uh, one of our first Hall of Fames that we covered at NFL Network. It was 2006 when Madden went into the Hall of Fame. He went in with a remarkable class, Harry Carson, Troy Aikman, if memory serves. And his speech there was perfect. It's one of the all-time great speeches where he came up with the idea that the busts come alive at night and talk to each other. And he said it in such a, a way it was like poetry. I, I know I'm going to botch the line, but I'll say it anyway. He said that, you know, the lights go down and the bus come alive and we're going to talk about, you know, whatever, forever. And it was literally like a, a piece of poetry that somebody um, just came off the top of his head. So he's somebody who speaks to so many generations, his generation, Mooch's generation, my generation, my children's generation. They know him from a video game. I know him from broadcasting. So many people know him from coaching. And that's just a testament to the many people whose lives he's touched. Yeah, and there's not an area of this sport, of this culture that John Madden didn't touch. And Mooch, you so beautifully took us to another side of this, right? Beyond the coach, beyond the broadcaster, the man, the husband, the father that he was. Can you share with us a little bit more of, of that side of him, like eating sandwiches? I mean, th th those are the moments that so few of us really got to experience. Oh, yeah. He had this theater uh, at home. Well, it, it was a, a separate building. But it was like the one we have in the NFL network. It had 10 screens. And every Sunday, he would watch. And a lot of his family would be there and a lot of friends, sometimes uh, parents of players from the Bay Area that are the kids are playing in the NFL or whatever. And he'd have food out. And they would watch NFL football every Sunday, all day. And that's what he did. And, and I, I wasn't able to do that with him, but one time, I can't remember why in the world was I not working on a Sunday, but I was there with him one, uh, one time. And uh, it was like, this is unbelievable. This guy, this guy is wired in. And, and I can't tell you how many times we would call each other up during a Monday night football game or even a college football game and say, did you see that? Did you see that? Was that a good call or was that a bad call? And he was going on and he was booming and he was and he was, you know, talking football with a passion about what he's what he did. I don't think there was a game that he missed and he was just so into it. And he had such a strong opinion with rules and, uh, you know, player safety. And he, you know, he had the ear of the commissioners, you know, he, he and the television people. He very, very influential human being on so many levels. And Rich Hello. talked about how many creations he, he uh, influenced uh, with his personality and his knowledge and his love for football and in sport. And so, um, you know, he's just, uh, we would go on the radio and just get on each other's case about how pit pitiful of a bocce ball player we both were. And, and, and uh, he was, he made things fun. He made, he made, the sport of football more fun than it really is <laughs> and everything else, bocce ball and eating lunch. Everything was more fun if John Madden was around. And um, the commissioner said it, there's, there's never going to be another John Madden. No. An irreplaceable being really here. And Rich, I'd love to give you the floor as, as we sure. close up here I mean, on this hour of total access with some final thoughts as we're all still processing this news sure he, he was larger than life which is kind of stunning at age 85 that he's gone um and again i remember being a kid seeing him in those mooch remember those miller light commercials where he burst through at the end and you know and he's and he, he never he never pounded a hammer in his life and he, <laughs> had, he, had, he would he had he's just you know he, I remember being a kid just laughing at the end of those commercials filled with personalities, Rodney Dangerfield. And he was the biggest personality of them all in those commercials. And then uh, honestly, he would, he, he brought a whole different way of broadcasting that was so much fun. And so uh, as a kid, I just was so attracted to his personality. And then, you know, it, the fact again, that my kids know him as a video game guy um, just shows you again how 
many different lives he touched. And I again, I'll just go back to that Hall of Fame in 2006 when he went in. And I'll never forget all of us when he got announced at that Super Bowl that year that he was going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We all looked around and said, wait a minute, he's not in yet? And then the question is, is what's he going in as? A coach, a broadcaster, an innovator? He could have literally gotten in for all three. And um, that just shows you, again, the, the imprint that he's left beyond the coaches who he's had an indelible mark on and the game and the commissioners who plural who have reached out to him for advice and he will be largely missed but never ever forgotten yeah the john you said, you, go ahead Mooch. well you know you, you said about all the different generations that you know when one is a celebrity and john course is a celebrity um one generation might say that he was a brilliant coach and uh, a, a winning coach for 10 years and never had a losing season. And I admire him because of that. And then you have the other the, the generation that say, well, he, he was the broadcaster that taught me football and made me enjoy football from the booth with Summerall and Al Michaels and everybody else. And that the kids are, you know, they, hey, I, I play his game. We play his game. That's what we do. We sit on our butt and play his game. And, and so every every age group knows and loves and admires that guy right there for different reasons and there, who else in this world has touched that many generations people all right steve, John Mary. steve mariucci rich eisen thank you both so much for sharing that with us we'll continue here to look back on the life and legacy of john madden who passed away today at the age of 85.